Hey, kitty. Is there some new mischief you're planning with your teddy? No. Kitty, measure height. Oh, dear. I understand your curiosity. But the teddy can't grow like you, me and our lovely friends. Because we are living things. And the teddy is a non-living thing. What? <laughs> It's living and non-living, little kitty. Hey friends, in today's episode, let us understand how everything around is divided into living and non-living things and what makes them so different. Zoom in! Look around and you will see many things right from a tiny mouse to speeding cars to grazing cows to the colossal buildings touching the sky. All these things you see, including us, are classified as living and non-living things. But the vital question is, how do we divide these two things apart? Let us dig deeper and seek answers. You see, life on Earth originated around 3.7 billion years ago. And to date, it is the only known planet bestowed with humans, plants, animals, and many other creatures. And if you notice, all of them possess specific characteristics. Yes, they grow with time, respire to survive, reproduce their species, react to the external environment through senses, and move from one place to another. And lastly, they have a particular lifespan and are not immortal. All these characteristics make them belong to the class of living things. Yes, another common factor that binds all the living things together is that they are made of microscopic structures called cells. But at the same time, they are unique and some do not possess all characteristics of a living thing. Yes, for instance, just like humans and animals, the plants also intake water and nutrients to survive. But when it comes to air, the plants inhale carbon dioxide and exhales oxygen. Also, as we can see, the plants aren't locomotive as well, meaning, like humans and animals who can walk and run, the plants do not move from one place to another, except to some extent in the direction of sunlight. Just like that, different animals live in different conditions, like in the air, water and land. To know more about it, you can watch our video classification of animals. The link is in the description below. Now, I know what you are thinking, my friends. If living things can move, eat, grow and reproduce, then what makes a non-living thing? Well, the short answer is, a non-living thing is entirely opposite to a living thing. Meaning, Anything that does not grow in size on its own cannot move from one place to another unless an external force is applied to it. They do not need food, air or water to survive. They cannot reproduce and have the superpower of immortality in some cases. These are classified as non-living things. These things are divided into two parts, natural and man-made. Some natural examples of non-living things are the glorious golden sun, the shiny silver moon, the twinkling stars, the mighty mountains, etc. Whereas man-made non-living things include things like tall buildings, toys, vehicles, furniture, etc. Trivia time! Did you know some non-living viruses become a living thing after entering someone's body? Also, you won't believe 
that although the jellyfish Turritopus doni belong to the class of living things, it is said to be eternal, due to which we call them immortal jellyfish. Wow! Isn't that amazing, friends? Hope you learned something new in today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Never mind. <laughs>